Right now at 11, a community in mourning comes together. Tonight, the people of Uvalde are mourning the 21 lives lost inside a school. Because our hearts are broken. We are devastated. This vigil gave people a chance to grieve and to lean on each other for support as they confront new questions about how this tragedy could have happened. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline London. And I'm Jim Rosenfield. Tonight, new stories are emerging about the children and teachers who died inside Robb Elementary. Here are all their faces. One student was an avid runner. Another loved to swim and to dance to TikTok videos. The teachers are also being remembered for pouring their hearts and souls into their work. There are so many more stories to be told as we put names and faces to these victims. NBC 10's Miguel Martinez Valle in Uvalde tonight. Miguel, you've been speaking to people there all day as they honor those who were lost. Hey, that's right. And I can tell you it's been a very somber day here in Uvalde. It's been a day of grieving as a community is still trying to wrap their heads around how this could happen. Why these children and these beloved teachers were targeted by the gunmen. But as those questions remain, we've also seen community members step up, join together, looking for hope and looking for healing and looking for ways to help their neighbors out. Heavy hearts looking for signs of hope in Uvalde. The day after the massacre at Robb Elementary cost the community 19 children and two beloved teachers. Loved ones and neighbors gathered across town for a vigil at the Fairfax and for a mass at Sacred Heart, looking to God for answers. Faith is what's going to bring us all together and, and get us all through this. It really is. And while we still don't have a motive for why the 18-year-old targeted this elementary school, we are learning more about some of the victims, including beloved teacher, mother, and family member, Irma Garcia. She was just an awesome, happy person. Music blaring at her house all the time. You knew that if we were going to Irma's house and she was going to have a gathering, we were going to have fun. We're also learning more about the Uvalde community, a community made up of people who wanted to do their part to help in the healing. People from San Antonio, you know, tech, are DMing me on Twitter and Instagram asking, like, what time the blood drives were going to be here and if there were places over there in San Antonio that would help us over here. And it's just amazing. And do their part in preventing another tragedy like this from occurring. We're definitely going to be able to start seeing that more here, especially in this community, seeing young, younger people getting out and voting to put change into office. People looking for answers, also looking for change. Now, I can tell you some of the efforts to help out, like uh, getting funds for these families affected by this violence, as well as blood donations, those continue on to tomorrow. I'll send it back to you guys. I'm Miguel Martinez Valle in Uvalde. Miguel, thank you. And tonight we are learning more about the gunman and the moments leading up to yesterday's unthinkable carnage. His family members insist they did not see this coming. Could you give us any insight into his Not state really. of mind? What, when's the last time you spoke to him? Uh, I speak to him daily, but... Yeah. You know he had guns in the house? No, I didn't know. The gunman's grandfather seemingly at a loss to explain his grandson's unspeakable actions yesterday morning. Officials say the rampage began around 11 a.m. Tuesday when the suspect posted on Facebook he was going to shoot his 66-year-old grandmother who lived with him inside this home. She survived and went to a neighbor to call police. As authorities say, he took off in her truck, posting on Facebook, I shot my grandmother. At around 11.15, I'm going to shoot an elementary school, he wrote. By 11.32, he was at Robb Elementary after police say he crashed the truck. There was a brave, consolidated independent school district resource officer that approached him, engaged him, and at that time, there was not, gunfire was not exchanged. The suspect was then able to go inside the school with a backpack and an AR-15 rifle he bought legally just after he turned 18 days ago. We went down the hallway, turned right, then turned left, and there was two classrooms that were adjoining and that's where the, the carnage began. Officials say he locked the door, then opened fire on more than a dozen children and their two teachers, 
before he was shot and killed by a responding off-duty Border Patrol officer. This shouldn't have happened like this, and I'm sorry to all the families. The gunman's aunt telling NBC News' Tom Yamas today she had no idea why her nephew snapped. Everybody holds things inside. People go through things, and nobody understands. Others who knew the shooter described him as a loner. Law enforcement says he has no known criminal history and no record of mental illness. And as Uvalde mourned the loss of those 21 neighbors, tension boiled over at one point today as state and local leaders were updating the public. Democratic nominee for governor Beto O'Rourke interrupted the briefing and confronted the group over gun control. Is right now, and you are doing nothing. No, he needs to get his ass out of here. This isn't the place to talk to us over. This is totally predictable. When you Sir, you're out of line. We need to focus not on ourselves and our agendas. We need to focus on the healing and hope that we can provide to those who have suffered unconscionable damage. Governor Abbott is scheduled to appear at the NRA convention in Houston on Friday. He would not say today if he still plans to attend. The debate over gun control is stretching far beyond the borders of Uvalde in Washington. A familiar war of words has begun between Republicans and Democrats in Congress. But Republican Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania told us today he is having discussions with a number of colleagues about legislation on background checks. And here at home in Philadelphia, local leaders are once again pleading for the chance to create their own gun laws. Right now, state law prevents Philadelphia or any other local government from regulating guns.